So they can potentially get a bomb by cheating on the deal. They could also potentially get a bomb just by keeping the deal mm -hmm. because they'll have that infrastructure in place. Congressman, is the Iran deal a done deal in your view? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, the vote in Congress in September 2015, while disappointing, to me that's just the beginning because we've seen Iran's behavior. Uh, they're not going to change their behavior. This deal empowers them in a number of ways. And I think you're going to need to have Congress uh, conducting oversight, proposing legislation to mitigate the damage. And then I think you know, you're going to see a new administration have to come in in January 2017 and reevaluate it. Well, yeah, so how do you make a change? I mean, the reality is Congress didn't like this deal from the get go. Much of the American people didn't like it. And yet the president moved forward anyway. So how do you change that scenario now? We've seen Iranian behavior basically remain antagonistic. And I think some of the people who supported the deal will have to look at that and mm -hmm. say, OK, uh, this isn't exactly working out the way I was promised. So I think if you look at targeted areas uh, to maybe reduce Iran's influence, like I have a bill to let the state en enhance state sanctions so that money is not going over to Iranian businesses, a third of which are controlled by the Revolutionary Guard Corps. You know, those are the types of things that I think could get significant support in Congress. So you think individual states can basically then impose their own sanctions? What would that look like exactly for Florida? Well, we already have it, um, and it's been something that's that's been on the books for a while. And the th the reason why you can continue to do that is because the Iran deal was not enacted as a treaty or a statutory law. If it was enacted as a treaty or statutory law, then it would preempt states' ability to do that. Well, it's an executive agreement, and so states are not preempted uh, from maintaining their own sanctions regimes. And look, there's still going to be a lot of money going to Iran. I wish the states could could do it all, but when you're talking about billions and billions of dollars that are at stake, I mean, it does help if we can prevent that money from going into the regime's coffers. What is your biggest fear about the deal? Is it the fact that they're getting hundreds of billions of dollars that they, that they can give to other state sponsors of terrorism? Or what's, what's your biggest concern? If you look at the deal, it recognizes Iran's vast nuclear infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the underground facility at Fordo. It's still there. They have the plutonium, uh, the heavy water reactor that can produce plutonium um, in Iraq. And so people say, well, we're going to inspect it to make sure they don't well, we don't know that. We have no idea whether inspectors are going to be able to do that. So my fear is what Prime Minister Netanyahu said, that it really paves their path to the bomb because they're going to continue to develop technology so they can potentially get a bomb by cheating on the deal. They could also potentially get a bomb just by keeping the deal mm -hmm. because they'll have that infrastructure in place. You said in remarks at the Heritage Foundation this morning that Iran and ISIS in some ways are very similar. What do you mean by that? They both subscribe to a militant form of Islam. It's an Islamic supremacist ideology where they are antagonistic to countries like us that don't submit to their way of life. Now, ISIS and Iran have some disagreements about how the caliphate should be run, but they both agree there should be a caliphate. They both believe that it should be governed by Islamic law, and they both believe they have a duty to export their worldview and beliefs beyond the borders that they maintain. You know, we've seen Iran test ballistic missiles, and yet there's, the administration just says, well, you know, that doesn't violate the deal. Let's just move on. So Iran's conduct has not caused them to reevaluate. So I think that they want to keep the deal above all else to say, hey, we have the deal. Uh, so I think Iran's going to be able to get away with a lot of small violations between now and January of 2017 when a new administration comes in.